Hello! Today we're going to be going through a thing that might help you in your manga making process that I'm going to call a manga journal. This is based on something I was doing in school for English because one of my um, subjects in high school was English Extension 2 which basically was where you wrote, you spent the year working on like a project, so say a sh short story was, was what I was doing, and you had to include like it was could be digital or physical you had to include a journal to show your process basically to prove that you had done the work over the year and written it yourself so this is that and then i've used that to help with my manga so this was last year's this is my current one for this year and i've put in some sticky tabs for some cool pages that um could help you guys to make your own basically you can put anything in it but i thought maybe to give some ideas of what you could use it for based on what i've done so We'll start with the oldest first, so just, that was just including, um, I wanted it to kind of be inspired by Toilet Ban Hanukkah with the idea of the, like, doppelgangers and stuff, so I just included that image, these are just in order of what put in, I did this page, which I thought was cool, I also have done it again for, um, my latest one, but yeah, just, especially with the idea of truth, just the fact that when you write a word too many times, it stops feeling real, um, Things like reflections are a good thing to add in. So you just write down and say how you feel about your progress, what you can do better on. Reflections are very helpful in writing and just staying on track. Uh, this is there's a page, sorry about my handwriting and stuff, um, where I was just looking at, say, this was just brainstorming words and ideas related to reality as a concept. Um, then I did lots of writing challenges. So like just different prompts, so these word prompts, I printed an A5 because I was, no that's A6, this is A5, um, to give me some space to, you know, um, write notes and stuff, um, I'm trying to find some other types of prompts, this was, ah, okay, this was a prompt from like an exam, yeah, um, this is just a picture. You can find some cool picture prompts. Um, Pinterest is a good source for the kind of stuff. This is another prompt that was from an exam because naturally I was like, oh, if I practiced writing to exams and stuff, that'll also help. This was just, this was a word-based prompt. Another word-based, a picture prompt. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything different. This is like an artwork that I liked. I still do like this art piece, but yeah. More writing prompts. That one was because I've got, um, yeah, and that's, was, uh, just including things like song lyrics is another thing you can include. Um, this is from Unordinary. I like the way that they sort of have the, like, it's kind of hard to see. Um, basically it's like the thought and then like, um, so, and then in, um, other writing sort of like other underlying thoughts and stuff and I just thought that was a cool effect so including just stuff from that you like from existing texts so be it books manga anything this was me doing some like annotating and analysis on a piece um I think the next page was yeah this was one of the ones that ended up being a bit of an inspiration for the story it's kind of hard to read because I just scanned it this is like a, you know, you might put in like a calendar so that you can keep track of what your goals are and stuff and what you got to do. Yeah, so that's naturally not all of it. A lot of pages aren't that exciting. They're just like research notes and stuff. But um, yeah, that's what I mostly put in mind, but I just wanted to have some things. So this one started out with sort of like what the purpose of the book was, so like my goals, kind of like a mission statement. Again, another sort of calendar, except this one was hand-drawn rather than printed. Um, gluing in sort of the, the design for the title for the story I was working on at the time. Um, what is the next sticky tab? This is just like sticking in like stuff that you write. Because I, I like to research and do stuff like that in handwritten, but I like to write, say if I'm writing a story or scripting, I like to do that typed. So yeah, just staple that in. Um, I recommend printing like two to a page if you, depending on your size of your book. Like if you're using an A4 
for a book I've just got these because these are sort of diaries and things that I do feel like having a slightly smaller one makes you feel less overwhelmed because you don't have a full A4 page to fill but it's up to you you can also do it digitally if you want I just prefer this so this is looking at different themes and a page idea this was like a challenge I did um I think I mentioned this in my video about idea generating and yeah just finding a word and writing stuff brainstorming that's basically what that is um this was a challenge I did where I was like creating a character from a song because in Genshin Impact Scaramouche is based on like Bohemian Rhapsody so this was inspired by Rickroll and like I also did on the next one try Viva La Vida because that song feels like kind of a story but it actually felt kind of harder than the Rickroll maybe because it already sort of had a more sort of set direction um, this was just stuff, you know, like, your different story structures, which is good because, like, they're visual. That's something that could be cool to put in. This has been really helpful. So these are the anagram types, which are basically kind of like a psychology... I'm not sure how um, well regarded they are in psychology, but I find, like, things like the Maya Briggs and anagrams, even though I don't necessarily agree with them in terms of actual people, they are helpful for basing characters, so... I like anagrams specifically because they're to do with fears and core motivations, which is good to sort of base a character around. So you've got like the, I use the, I reference this a lot, which is why I made sure to um, emphasize this because yeah, that's, I find that helpful because giving motivations is very important for the characters. So this I um, emphasized because I wanted to divide up the page, so I just like folded it. Um, the actual page itself isn't that exciting, but yeah, that's something you can do if you want to, say, section it off in a nice, easy way. Just just fold your paper. Um, this is the story circle, which I emphasized before, but this is sort of a big one and the types of conflict. Um, oh yeah, you can also, like, more printouts and just... So this one was like, I think I glued one of the pages and then um, used a paper clip to keep it in. Another logo design, and then lists, a lot of lists. Like, so from websites like CBR, the gamer, you know, things to do with like, oh, top 10 this in anime and stuff. I've got a lot of those kind of articles. These are like most popular manga and anime on things like Mal, you know, just to, to look up, to maybe read and stuff. Um, yeah, best rated um, like on IMDb films and TV shows. Um, there isn't a purpose for these changing color. I just ran out of pink ones. So these are like the 12 archetypes, which I got, I stuck in. I did start writing them out, but I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm just going to print them. Um, so yeah, these are to do with literature. So they're kind of similar, I guess, in terms to Enneagram, but this is more based on literary tropes, whereas Enneagram is supposed to reflect people and more psychology. So they are slightly different. See, Enneagram has nine, well... They, there's nine, but you're, like, the way it works is you've got your main one, W, which is, like, wing, and then one of the ones next to it. So, for example, I'm, uh, I think I'm 6W5. Um, and whatever I'll hate them is on, um, personality database. That's another good resource, um. Personality database is basically like a website where it, where people submit what kind of like anagram and Maya Briggs characters are. It can be helpful to sort of get a general idea of like similar personality characters and stuff. Um, this is just oh, this is a list of um. So this is one of the the resources from a video that I was watching. So for further research. So I guess if you're watching a YouTube video and they include sources, you can go read some of the stuff that they've got research from for further research on the topic um this is an article on um so this is brandon sensen's laws of magic i think i included all three laws but so yeah just gluing in articles and stuff um you could also probably highlight and write notes and stuff and annotate it if you wanted to um i'm just lazy uh this was something i did where i was like brainstorming um about the powers um, by just spam messaging my friend, like, that's all me writing. 
they didn't even respond, but I stuck it in because, you know, that was a way that I brainstormed, but I wanted to include this because sometimes just doing it conversationally instead of, you know, formally written down sometimes helps. So, yeah. And it also looks cool if you've got, like, this was on Instagram messages um, with the nice pretty thing. Um, yeah, that was just me spamming a friend. Uh, so I included in some, so I wanted sort of some ideas for like their outfits and stuff. So I've got a heap of images. So we've got like human Hatsune Miku male cosplays. Uh, you've got like Heather Chandler from Heather's, some like Ouija formal outfits. Um, his name is Len, right? And I don't even know what these couple are. They just looked cool and suited the style, but I don't know the characters. And then I've got Lenny from Genshin Impact. And then I just did some basic sketches. Usually I do draw more in sketchbooks, like the character design rather than journals. But you can still scribble in here if, in your book if you want. Um, you could probably also take sketchbook pages and stick it in if you wanted. Like you can do anything, um, naturally. But yeah, usually I keep my sketchbook stuff in the sketchbook. This was just... I um was finding my idea for the story wasn't working, so I scrapped it, and so I indicated like when I was you know going back. So this was going back to come up with a new idea. Just I felt like it was too broad and was going to feel like depending on which part of the story you like, the other half was going to feel like filler and stuff. So yeah, I did a heap of work like um printed and just stuck it in. But uh, this was an idea I came up with. So. I made a list of series and media that I like, um, and just spun a wheel to um, come up with sort of, I guess, a story based on uh, um, oh, I'm not thinking right. Based on different sort of series, so I had oh okay, so I had a prompt, and then I was gonna write sort of come up with an idea based on Dan Harmon's story circle. Um, and then I was like, okay, and then I did one, att another attempt with the hero's journey. Um, I find the hero's journey is a little bit too specific with how they title things. And because I take my things very literally, um, I find that the hero's journey's wording of the different stages leads me down sort of a too formulaic path. So I prefer Dan Harmon just cause it's a bit more broad, um, but yeah, I made it like a spinner thing else. So this was like, okay, the two results I got was Percy Jackson, Dungeons and Dragons. So I took the prompt and then tried to incorporate all of that. And then did was working. Th so this one had Genshin Impact and Othello. Um, and now it's for something completely different. So just list things that you could use as inspirations from different media. Um, so like different themes and ideas that different series um have this was like me working on a character so i had i was just going to start so i did the like the different 16 personalities of so the maya briggs um might be a bit hard to see the list oh, can i zoom in oh that's much better um so yeah i don't recommend necessarily doing this without um reading at what they are because this was just completely random because some of these will kind of contradict each other especially with the enneagram compared to like your um these are your uh, alignments from D D. because for example i think it's like one personalities don't want to be rule breakers and stuff so that doesn't exactly make sense if you're going for like a chaotic and i i don't Follow star signs for real people, but they are helpful to give some vague traits for your characters and also space out birthdays a bit better. Um, if you give them all different star signs, that gives you it makes it easier to pick birthdays and things. Sometimes I also pick birthdays based on dates that are relevant to the character. Like, I don't know, if I had a character that was a clown, maybe I'd put them on International Clown Day as their birthday. So, yeah, this was like working on the character. And, you know, writing down the basic fear and basic desire based on this and different things. Um, just some research notes. This is based, this is a diagram of a 5x5 five five version of the alignment chart. I find this more helpful than the typical 3x3. Um, three three. 
just because it's a little bit more specific um you won't be able to read it because it's oh, it's got tiny writing i just if you look up five by five alignment it's one of the first images that comes up so yeah it's got like little descriptions it's just a bit more specific on how their philosophy works and stuff and it's a good way to like you've got 25 options as opposed to nine so that spreads out your cast a bit more and I, alignments in D and D are a bit controversial as to what they actually mean, and how chaotic like a chaotic good character is, and just because yeah people play them very like they're like oh I'm chaotic neutral I'm just gonna stab this person ha 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 ha, this was just like an image that I stuck in um a diagram to do with negative arcs and also some lists that I mentioned earlier so like um like CBR so like good character arcs and disappointing. This is the logo I signed for this this series. Um, it could change before I actually release it. This was some work on, so I wanted to include elevators as like a visual symbolism. So looking at what kind of things that they, like what they symbolize. Um, I did a, some blackout poetry. So if you don't know what blackout poetry is, it's a form of poetry where you get like, um, like, you, you print out or you rip out a page of a book and you just, like, emphasize words. So this is a pretty basic version. Sometimes, like, the most simple is just getting black and blacking out everything except for the words you want to keep. Sometimes people might draw an image related to it and stuff. I was too lazy to black out the whole thing, so I just emphasized the words that I took and drew some stars. This was using, uh, like, Posca markers. This is, I've, I've done this today. Because, like, this is my current one. And then, as I said before, like, writing words. And, yeah. So I think that's about everything I wanted to show in these. I hope that this has helped. I'm also going to include in the description a link to a document for my original script. Because originally this was going to be two parts. Where I had an information one about what you could include. And then I was going to go through, like, a tour of these um, with to show as an example, but I've decided to just show you the examples, explain as I go, and then release the original script, because I did this unscripted. I'll just put that in the doc as a document that you guys can read if you want to. You don't have to. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I really hope that this helps to, you know, make the process easier. These are just basically you can do anything, but I hope that I've given some ideas and thanks so much for watching. Uh, Please comment if you've got any ideas of what you want me to make videos on. I'm hoping to be a lot more regular than I have been. Uh, yeah.